Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and we've got a variety of new toys going on, and one of them is a plugin for you today. The rest of it is just a whole pile of kind of camera stuff, and you wouldn't believe how busy I've been trying to deal with all of this. Make it all work. Uh, it's a different kind of scenario. Um, I almost have to do this in a live streamy fashion because the only way I'm able to record all of this stuff is with OBS. Um, what I was using, ScreenFlow, was not working with the black magic thing that I started using. But that's as maybe. Let's talk about the new plugin, Monitoring. Now you might have seen this before, but we have some new features in monitoring that weren't there before. So I'm going to quickly start showing you how that works. And then uh, we're going to do a video just like I usually do a video. And I will upload it and I will see how all that works out because the attempt obviously is to learn how to do this sort of thing in a new style that's maybe a little bit more upscale as far as uh, your whole video making kind of stuff works. So let's play some music. Same old music. Monitoring has pretty much all the same stuff that it had before. Like we got out 24, out 16 is uh, CD ready. And we've got stuff like the peaks. And again, that's something that will show you which things are louder. It's not that you're necessarily supposed to make it sound awesome all by itself. Instead, that's something where you just want to keep stuff from being horribly wrong. And by the same token, slew only. This obviously you're not going to mix your bass using this, but this should show you if anything is wildly wrong. And same deal with subs only. With subs only, you want to check that out and make sure that it's going to work acceptably for you, that the things in the super lows are not too crazy. We've got a mono setting and a side setting. And I have recently put out a plugin called Lanome that, um, or Monome, sorry which does more complicated things with mid and side. My feeling is that you don't need to do things quite as complicated with um, mid and side out of monitoring, because this is just your basic reference kind of thing. So we're going to go on to some of the other ones, like vinyl is a EQ, which roughly captures the loudness levels that you would get out of a vinyl record, and it'll roll off stuff that's not accessible like the full range is on out 24 vinyl is more restricted and we've got a couple of changes with the other monitoring things like ORAD is the loudness restricted kind of thing and this is two speakers but check it out you have a mono ORAD that's not just the right channel that is mono into the right channel so you can listen to it on just one speaker this one or mono lat which is the other speaker and the idea with that is you should be able to get the sense of this sort of mono oratone style mix check that people do using that it'll come out of only one of the one side then you got phone and somebody reminded me like, oh yeah, phones aren't usually six feet away. So I made it just strictly mono and this is more of a casual check really. Then we've got cans, but you might notice there's more to it than just that. Cans of course is about headphones and cans A is quite subtle. You could work on this and do critical decisions as far as how you ran things. 
and then cans B was originally the obvious one. But I was asked for more. So with the purposes of making more, here's what I started doing. I've got cans C and then I did a cans D just to go fully over the top. So we will go back to say uh, cans A. And this is going to control fatigue between, you know, monitoring and listening to things. But if we go to can C, all of a sudden, that's a lot more kind of side ambience going on. And then if we turn into can C, now that's, a, that's just too much. You should not use this much. Definitely don't mix over this. But people kept wanting more, so I thought it behooved me to try to make at least something that is too much. Now you notice one thing about this, which is interesting, is that using cans in D, what's going on there is, since it is so extreme, and since it is using all passes, as its way of adding a blurred channel cross connection type of thing. That's gonna act a little bit like peaks only. So, go to peaks only. That's exaggerated and boosted and it's gonna bring out anything that's actually mixed louder than it should be. It's radically changing all the sounds, but Can D is going to give you a little bit of a sense of that in a more listenable kind of way. And of course, let's go back to Can's A again. That's a lot more like what the real mix is. And then Can's B is meant to be more intense. And then we've got Can C being really quite intense. If you need an obvious cross-coupling plug-in, this might be the one for you. Then, Peaks, of course, is very crazy and strange, but you notice how that is combining everything together in such a way where that hat is sounding more like the, the Peaks version of the hat. And all in all, it's the music is loud and it's getting to me all in all this should be your sort of final this is your final boss as far as monitoring plugins is concerned and i'm working on a lot of stuff like that for instance i have a final boss deesser plugin getting developed and I'm still working on the secret mystery project for the musician who's got a lot going on and he's working really hard at the moment. So I'm not hearing back from him super awesome, uh, often. And, you know, it's a lot of irons in the fire. I'm looking forward to doing some cool stuff with uh, my personal music. And I'm developing some other things beyond just trying to upgrade my uh, visual style here with these videos. And one of them is I'm doing some interesting stuff with my rack system, the Eurorack stuff, because I like your synthesizers and things. And I like experimenting with them and doing stuff with them. So the idea there is I'm identifying things that I'm going to be working on in future. And I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be developing stuff for the uh, music thing modular radio music. The radio music already has a alternate firmware called chord organ. And I am very fond of chord organ. I'm liking what that is capable of, but it's not quite ready yet. I'm able to program it in such a way. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. I'm able to program it in such a way where it, uh, gives me a very interesting set of chord sequences 
that will reside within a mode or nearly within a mode, but I'm going to have to do more and that's going to involve programming, but that's something that you can do. If you have one of these things, you can reprogram it. You can turn radio music into a chord organ or back. You can build it from kits. I built four. They all worked first time, which is more than I can say for the reverb driver that I built, but that's another story. And I am going to make chord organs that can do these sequences of chords, but that will also take circle of fifths CV input rather than just diatonic chromatic scale CV input because I have a theory as to what is going to be amazing and that's going to work out. Another thing I'm going to work on, and this is more perhaps immediately feasible, but we'll see. Um, I want to build stuff out of axolotties. I'm still into that. And I'm, I'm also looking to get some of my stuff going where I'd like to work using a VCV rack more, but I'm needing to upgrade my systems a little bit until I have something that can run non-trivial stuff on VCV rack. But once I do that, you're going to start seeing stuff come out that way. And Axolotti is probably going to be my best bet for building something that'll act like a really killer uh, Eurorack-capable reverb kit thing that people can build. So it's probably not going to be so much that I'm going to be building stuff and selling them, as in I'm going to be making videos and things and showing you how to do that. Because you can buy an Axolotti for, what, something like 80 euros? It, they're not expensive. They're a little experimenter board. And they have really good uh, analog connectivity. You can get stereo in and out. And one interesting thing about them is that used in a modular context, what you'd be doing is setting up a couple of jacks and sort of normaling the jacks together so that you could run through the, the new thing and then still record the output, have your dry signal, and then put a big old resistor in there to pad down the modular voltage output, which is extremely high, until the Axolotti can stand that input without getting smashed. And then I build in a reverb, and then the Axolotti's full output is not really modular level, but will you deal with that somehow, come up with the amplification or just mix it a little bit louder. And you can have stereo ins and outs, and it's 24-bit 48K for about 80 euros. And I think I can I think I can make a reverb. I mean if nothing else I'm sure I could do like MV. But I think I can do more interesting reverbs. I am exploring ideas for stuff that I can do that would make amazing reverb concepts and I'll be experimenting with that kind of stuff because I feel like I should. I feel like I should get into some be getting into some new stuff that'll justify the glamour of the new presentation. In any case, um, stuff like developing for the Axolotti and coming up with things for the uh, the radio music slash chord organ stuff, and I can also I can provide and do provide um, samples and things you could use for the radio music directly. But. Uh, that kind of stuff is supported by Patreon. That's how I have the facilities to do cooler things. Although, granted, some cool things that I do don't actually cost money. Like, I'm stopping these from blinding you by taking multiple uh, wrenches and tilting them downwards, which works for, like, working on things or stuff anyway. But I needed to take physical wrenches and bend the glasses so that they wouldn't fit that they wouldn't reflect in the way that they do. And that means I can read notes of mine by simply looking at the notes. But uh, I shouldn't keep going on and on like this. In fact, let me fade away our monitoring plugin. Again, maybe I'm going to have to start doing everything in OBS, but that goes with my streaming, so that's all fine. And 
all this is an exciting time and I'm looking forward to doing some cool stuff for you. So by all means, if you are not following me on YouTube, like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff, ring the little notification bell. That's not for me. That's basically just YouTube will punish me if I don't make people behave the way that YouTube wants people to behave regarding its stuff. And as far as Patreon, if you are willing to support me with Patreon and can do so, I promise I will use that. And they've been pretty good to me, but they're not likely to be mean to me. I mean, I am a left-wing computer programmer doing open source. Of course, they're going to like me. So that's a perfectly serviceable shopping cart kind of thing for me. And if you're willing to do that, then please throw some money my way. And I will turn it into coolness and ways to teach people how to do good stuff. Because that's just how I roll. That's what I want to do with my life. This is pretty much all I've got. This is all I do. And like every day in every way, it's getting better and better. So that's pretty rewarding. In any case, that'll do for now. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.